I am Dr. Pradeep Bardhan. I am from the ICT DRB in Bangladesh. I am a clinician and, uh, and also clinical researcher. And I am I'm looking at uh, having uh, experience in treating cholera outbreaks in many different continents, including Africa and Asia. And I'm going to Haiti uh, as being asked by the WHO to provide my and use my experience to give, give some help, provide whatever help I can be to Haiti. The first thing to, to realize by all the healthcare providers uh, in each and every level is not to panic. This is a disease which is very much treatable and not difficult to treat. The, the important thing for the, all healthcare providers, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, healthcare vol uh, volunteers, is that, that whenever there is a suspicion of cholera, not to delay. The treatment is simple, but one has to take actions promptly. That is the important thing. You have to take actions promptly, not difficult problems. But and the, and the guidelines stay said very clearly. The main problem in, in cholera, like in other diarrheal diseases, is dehydration. Cholera is just like any other diarrhea. Just it's a little bit more severe, and that's why we have to take actions quickly. In, when patients are coming with diarrheal diseases and reporting to the in the reception for the tri triage. It's important to Im immediately recognize which patients are severely dehydrated. It's very important because these patients, because severe dehydration is a medical emergency. These patients cannot wait. They have to be immediately treated. So the important thing in the triage is to, is to, to, to recognize what are the signs of dehydration if they are there. And if there are signs of dehydration, what category of dehydration it is? What is the degree of dehydration? If it is severe dehydration, immediate actions. In many of the times, you'll see that patients who are coming in, uh, in, the, in the triage with severe dehydration they will have feeble pulse, or sometimes you cannot even feel the radial pulse. Immediately, you put on a needle on the, on the veins. If necessary, in adult patients particularly, you can put on several lines at a time and give on giving fluids till you can see that the pulse is returned and you can count the pulse. Once the, uh, the pulse is countable, then you can uh, then you know that okay you are doing it rightly then you can then you can start getting down making the calculation how much fluid this patient will need and make a ration but till the pulse is countable it's an emergency you are tackling so you go on giving fluid as quickly as possible in our hospital we have patients where we have put on four lines on four limbs on two arms and two two legs at a time the target target should be that within 3 hours all the patients should be fully rehydrated. Now, one thing we need to keep in mind is that when the patient has come to the, the, the healthcare center or the hospital, depending upon the degree of dehydration and assessing the patient's body weight, we make a calculation. Okay, this is the initial uh, deficit they have. So, for example, a 50 kg adult patient weighing roughly around 50 kilo kg has come. So, the initial deficit is approximately 10 percent, which is five liters. 500 ml of fluid, that is the 5,000 ml of fluid, that is the initial deficit. But over the, which we should be giving over the period of three years. But please remember, and we need to remember ourselves, that within these three hours, the patient might be losing even more fluids. So we need to put on that add on in, on the calculation of total fluid. Use of antibiotics in cholera reduces the duration of the disease and also reduces the severity of the disease. So that's the reason why we say that yes antibiotics should be used in cholera. Which antibiotic, as I said, depends upon the local sensitivity pattern. As, 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 uh, as much as I know about the, the sensitivity of Vibrio cholera strains, which have been isolated from Haiti, we know that they are sensitive to tetracyclines groups, they are sensitive to ciprofloxacin, and more probably they, are, they might also be sensitive to azithromycin. So in, at least in Haiti, in adults, a uh, single dose of doxycycline, 300 milligram, should be okay. However, in, in, uh, as you know, that we do not profess giving doxycycline to, to pregnant ladies or to young children. In those situations, the other option would be using azithromycin. In an adult, the dose would be one gram, single dose. In children, it is 20, 20 milligram per kg, also can be used as single dose. Simple. However, we have to remember that the main treatment in cholera is fluids. If we give fluids to a patient, cholera patient, not antibiotics, the patient may, may need an extra day or two to recover, but will recover. 
But if we have a coronary patient, we give antibodies, but no fluid, it's not good. We might very well lose the patient. We have to remember that these patients are likely to go on passing fecal matters when they're in the hospital, when they're being examined. So, uh, so the clothes, the bed sheets, they will be dirty and getting dirty. The people who are attending them will, might, might also be getting some, some of those things. So we need to also end, and, and, and the cholera excreta is infectious. So whenever we are looking at, at, looking at uh, treating and managing cholera patients, there has to be systems where we can properly dispose of those infected and contaminated materials in a proper way, not only for the patient, it's also for the healthcare providers themselves. For example, in our, in our hospital in Dhaka, that's the capital of Bangladesh, uh, we treat more than 100,000 diarrhea patients every year, and uh, a lot of them are cholera patients. And we have been doing that for the last 40 years. And over this period, there has been not a single instance of any of our uh, staff in the hospital contracting cholera from, uh, from, the, from any other patient, not a single instance. The reason being that, that uh, the cholera requires a quite a high dose for, to get, uh, to, for infecting dose, what we say, to make a person sick. And um, so, it's, it's, so you just cannot get cholera by touching a cholera patient or, or hugging a cholera patient like that. And, uh, and, but I, and, and by using universal precautions and the things that we have talked about earlier, the, our hospital staff will be pretty safe. They will not be having any, any, any cholera by themselves. No reason to panic. Cholera is a simple disease to treat. And the important thing for us will be to, to recognize that yes, this is a patient who comes with diarrhea, with, with dehydration, could be a case of cholera. Treat the patient like that, keeping in mind, remembering that the most important thing to do is to keep the patient hydrated. As long as we can keep the patient hydrated, and there are very simple clinical parameters to know how to keep a patient hydrated to recognize the signs of dehydration. If we keep the patient hydrated, even if we do not do anything else, the patient will recover.